Podcast 26, Week 28. Welcome to the podcast, Your Pregnancy Week by Week. This podcast covers the 40 weeks of pregnancy in 38 segments and is based on the book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, by Dr. Glade Curtis, MD, and me, Judith Schuler, MS. The information in our books and podcasts is a general informative guide about pregnancy. None of the information we provide is intended to replace, countermand, or conflict with the advice given to you by your own doctor. Always follow his or her advice. Use the information you learn here as a starting place in your dialogue to help you put your pregnancy concerns, questions, or interests into words. The goal of every pregnancy is a healthy mom and a healthy baby. To that end, our podcasts cover many topics. In each weekly podcast, we'll highlight information contained in the same weekly discussion in our book. We suggest you read each weekly chapter to learn further information, such as how baby is growing and changing and how you're growing and changing too. Our book also contains illustrations of changes in baby or you, advice for dads, charts, lists, boxes, an exercise for every week, a comprehensive glossary, hints, tips, snippets, and blurbs we just can't reproduce in a podcast. So let's get started on this week's discussion. We're going to look at week 28. Do you have a bad taste in your mouth? It's called dysgeusia and may be caused by pregnancy hormones. Some women have a metallic or bitter taste. Others lose taste for certain foods. The condition usually disappears during the second or third trimester, so take heart, it may be gone soon. Do you suffer from asthma? It's a chronic respiratory disease that causes small airways in the lungs to narrow. Asthma in pregnancy is the most common chronic condition we see. Controlling your asthma may help lower the risk of some pregnancy problems. If not well controlled, asthma can lead to high blood pressure in you. It may also result in a cesarean delivery for you and low birth weight in baby. Get a flu shot to reduce the risk of getting severe respiratory illness, which could make asthma attacks worse. A flu shot is safe any time during pregnancy. During pregnancy, your oxygen consumption increases by about 25%. Asthma treatment is important so baby can get the oxygen it needs to grow and develop. If your asthma is severe, you may be prescribed an anti-inflammatory nasal spray or an inhaled steroid. Discuss the situation at one of your early prenatal visits. Vitamin D is important for your bones and baby's bones. Sun exposure is a great source of vitamin D. Short periods in the sun usually allow your body to produce all the vitamin D it needs for the day. But there's a downside to sun exposure. It's sun exposure. Short outdoor exposure is probably okay, but don't overdo it. You can get vitamin D from food sources. Some products are fortified with it. Read labels. You may also want to ask your doctor about taking vitamin D supplements. Many women have lost weight following meal and menu plans that provide prepackaged foods. Two of the most popular are Nutrisystem and Jenny Craig. Pregnant women want to know if they can continue to eat the foods and follow the meal plans during pregnancy. Better not to. Both programs recommend to pregnant women not follow their food plans because calories are too restricted. The plans don't supply enough calories for you to stay healthy and for your baby to grow and develop. Did you think you weren't going to need any more tests now that you're in your third trimester? Not so. Your doctor may order various tests to determine how you and baby are doing as labor and delivery get nearer. 28 weeks is a time when many doctors initiate or repeat certain blood tests or procedures. Testing for gestational diabetes may be done at this time. If you're RH negative, you may receive a shot of Brogam near this week. Do you know your blood type? Blood groups are designated as types A, B, A, B, and O, and also positive or negative. A, B, O incompatibility results when a woman has type O blood and her partner has type A, 
B or AB blood, and they conceive a baby with type A or B blood. It's not as serious as RH negativity, but it's good to know about it. Problems can occur when a pregnant woman creates antibodies against her baby's different blood type. These antibodies enter the placenta and can cause anemia or jaundice in the newborn. The good news is effects are usually mild. Treatment in newborns is with light therapy, phototherapy. Talk to your doctor about it if you have questions. You may be wondering how your baby is lying inside the uterus. It's difficult, usually impossible, at this point in pregnancy to tell because baby changes position throughout pregnancy. What you know now doesn't apply to how baby will be lying tomorrow. You can feel your abdomen to try to see where the head or other parts are located. In another three to four weeks, the baby's head will be harder and it will be easier at that time for your doctor to determine how baby is lying. Canavan disease damages how nerve cells in the brain send and receive messages. It's more frequent among Saudi Arabians and Ashkenazi Jews. The disease affects the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves. Problems worsen over time and are usually fatal. Affected infants may appear normal at birth, but usually develop symptoms between three and six months of age. Cases of Canavan disease range from mild to severe. There is no cure, nor is there a standard course of treatment. The disease can be identified by a blood test. Home births happen. Each year in the United States, about 35,000 babies are born at home. Nearly 9,000 of these births are unplanned. That means the other 26,000 home births are mom's, mom, and dad's to be did plan. Is a home birth safe? Problems can arise with a home birth, so you should know the risks involved. If you want to have a home birth, this option involves some ground rules. The participation of a trained midwife or nurse midwife is essential. The pregnancy should be healthy and low risk. In addition, you must plan for emergencies. Based on Dr. Curtis's own experiences with the aftermath of home births, we advise against it. Any woman considering this option should talk to her doctor about the safety and wisdom of delivering her baby at home versus delivering at the hospital or a birthing center. Maybe a safer alternative can be found. Even though delivery is several weeks away, it isn't too early to begin making plans for your trip to the hospital. Keep your partner's phone numbers in your phone and write them down, too. It would be a disaster if you needed to call a number and your phone wasn't charged and you couldn't find the number. Also, consider what you'll do if he isn't near enough to take you. Who are potential drivers? How do you contact them? Make plans now. Remember, our podcasts give you the highlights of what may be happening in any given week. Check our book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, for more detailed information. You may also want to check out our book for partners, Your Pregnancy for the Father-to-Be. It covers pregnancy from a man's point of view and provides lots of valuable information a man may find very useful. If you want to find out more about our podcast, visit our website, yourpregnancyweekbyweek.com. If you're looking for something specific, check out the podcast topics list. It details topics covered in each podcast, so you can listen to a particular podcast or read a certain chapter week if you want more information, or if you want to check out something you missed or a topic we haven't covered yet.